Why did you feel the need to write this book? Um, you know, I didn't set out to write the book. I, um, after going to Janine, uh, I was kind of, I was very much changed by that experience in Janine. Um, I was very moved and, and it stirred up all kinds of emotions. Uh, and for a writer, I think that's, you know, that's the fodder for, for anything, that, um, for, for any, any piece that you produce. So when I went back, um, I was mostly just writing reflections, and then I soon realized that I was writing a novel. So it wasn't anything that I planned um, by, any, by any means, it, and it, just, it was something that just happened and, and came of its own accord in a way. So where did you end up in writing in first person? <laughs> um, again, you know, I'd like to say that I had a big plan and I've been, you know, I, but I didn't. The truth is, I just, I was just writing. And, you know, the book is, the book is told in multiple voices. There's also a third person um, voice in there. Um, and interestingly, the editors wanted me to change it and make it all into third person because they thought it was confusing changing back and forth and so forth. But uh, uh, I do, I think, I feel like writing in first person, um, just like you heard, is, is hugely important for a narrative of people who are oppressed or violated um, because it is, it's, it's laying claim to your story and it's telling your story in your own voice. Why do you think your book got such a success? I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe there's, um, there's a desire in the West to, to hear something more. To, I, I, at least in the United States, there, there is a sense that people have that they're not getting the whole story. There's a sense that people have that things don't add up. You know, so the official narrative is that, you know, Israel is fighting these dangerous terrorists and et cetera, et cetera. And yet people will see stories of little boys getting arrested. They'll see stories of little boys throwing rocks and then, you know, t at tanks. So I think there's, a, there's kind of a disconnect. There's an intellectual, you know, dissonance that, that doesn't add up for a lot of people. And so I think as a result of that, there is a curiosity. To, to read something from the, a Palestinian point of view. Um, so that's one thing I, I think that, that you know, there's, there's that interest. The other thing is that um, I think the way I write is I've been told, somebody told me that it looks like, I, I wrote it in English, but somebody told me that um, it looks like it was written by somebody who doesn't speak English. <laughs> So um, I think for people who, who are interested in language, um, are interested in it, because even though it's written in English, it's written in kind of an Eastern style, like it, and um, Arabic prose tends to be very verbose and flowery and poetic, um, whereas I think in English, there's a, there's a greater economy of words. Um, so. I sort of brought that Arabic style into English writing. Um, at least that's what you know. That's that's what people who are bilingual have have commented about it. So, as a writer, what's your judgment on the information of Palestine now? I mean, it's. I don't feel like um, mainstream media has altered its its voice very much. Um, you know, earlier today, uh, I had an interview. You know, some a reporter was asking me about suicide bombing in Janine. You know, and and her her principal question was, um, what do you think has changed in Janine? Um, uh, what what has no? I mean, it was taken for granted. She goes, what what do you think has caused the change in Janine? And I said, you know, what change? She goes, well, you know, Israel used to call it the the den of the den of suicide bombings, etc. But now there's not so much. Even you know, everybody agrees that there's been a change. I said, well, I don't agree. You know, when I never saw Israel, I never saw Janine as a den of you know suicide bombings. You know? So there is still this um, hyper Zionized you know uh, version to to how 
Western media reports things. Um, but what has changed is that there's a greater Palestinian participation at, in, 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 the, in the media, at least through um, online sources. You know, we have, um, we have journalist websites like the Electronic Intifada, like the Palestine Chronicle, Counterpunch, Dissident Voice. I mean, there's a lot of these independent media sources that, um, that people can go to for, uh, for authentic analyses, you know, and for native, native analyses. So um, I think that's the, that's the major difference. I don't think, I think the changes are driven principally by Palestinian, greater Palestinian participation in Western discourse how the world is seeing Palestine, basically it's not paying that much attention. When I was in Gaza, we had this um, conversation about what do, I asked the students about what do they mean when they say the world, you know, the world is watching, the world's doing nothing, blah, blah, And inevitably the answer was, it's, you know, we're talking about Europe and the United States. But that's not the world, you know? And I think we have to stop seeing the world as the United States and Europe, because there's a whole world out there that actually understands and stands with us. Most African nations get it, and they have always and consistently stood with us. Um, and not just on, on the level of the citizenry, but, you know, government levels. Um, there's, there's a whole Central and South America nations um, that have always principally stood with us, and sometimes very um, vocally and very uh, in action um, and in money and in deeds and so forth. So I think um, I would like to see Palestinian focus shift a little bit towards these nations who I feel are our natural allies. Um, I think and I'm and I'm speaking principally on the government level because I think on the on the on the you know the the citizen the common citizen uh, level I think all people of conscience um, who are knowledgeable about what is really happening um, stand with us right but on a government level we have never been supported by European nations we have never been supported by any of the, any North American nation. As a matter of fact, I mean, all of these countries have been active participants in our destruction. I resent the idea of, um, of going to them, of negotiating with them, of trying to prove our humanity to them, you know. Um, and so, so I think, so, that, so that's one, you know, one point, one, one part of the answer is to really kind of think about who we mean when we say the world and not and consciously not let that be the United States and Europe. Um, and, and consciously make an effort to recognize the nations that have stood with us. So for example, you know, when, when the United States withdrew money from UNESCO um, because it gave this minimal recognition of Palestinian humanity and nationhood, it was Gabon um, in, in Africa stepped up and gave a couple million dollars to offset uh, to offset the, the loss of U.S. dollars. Um, Hugo Chavez kicked the Israeli ambassador out and he withdrew um, the, the, the Venezuelan ambassador and so, so did Evo Morales for, um, uh, for, for Bolivia. Uh, and both, both Evo Morales and the late Hugo Chavez sent money and aid to Gaza after Kaslet. So, and and uh, the South African ambassador, for example, you know, refused very publicly to have Israel plant a tree in his name um, on, on a destroyed Palestinian village. So these are all very open and public political acts by world leaders that um, I feel like are, are worthy of more Palestinian um, attention. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about your next book? Uh, um, well, it's, it's, uh, it's the principal 
um, voice. What's well, third person and first person also, same same kind of thing. I apparently only know how to write one kind of book. I don't know. It's like it started out being something very different, but then somehow it's evolved into a woman's story, strong women characters. It's multi generational. It's Palestinian in Gaza. It's it's mixed voices, per, first person. Um, but the principal first person voice actually is a little boy. It's a Palestinian little boy. And um, so yeah, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> You cannot tell us more. Eh? What do you want to know? <laughs> it, well, it's it, it. You know, there's there's an aspect of it that's in the United States and an aspect in Gaza. So, there I told you a lot. That's more than I told anybody actually. <laughs>